Hello everyone, John Frausto with TopspinTennis.com. In this video, I'm going to break down the deep return of serve, um, specifically the forehand return of serve. Um, I utilize uh, footage of Fernando Verdasco in this video. Enjoy the video. All right, so a um, little background on Fernando. Um, he's won $17.6 million on the tour, so he's had a pretty successful career. That puts him 29th all time um, on the earnings list. Um, he's won sing seven singles titles and eight doubles titles. So, um, you know, I'd consider him in singles like an aggressive baseliner, but he is an all court player. He can volley, he's got great overheads, good net play. Um, but um, one thing that the Spaniards do quite a bit is they back up on the return of serve. There's a reason why they do that. Their intent is really to, one, they want to utilize their stronger side, the stronger wing. For, so for the most part, it's the forehand. Um, two, they want to buy a little bit more time, right? Get a better look at the ball. And then three, they want to inflict as much damage on their opponents that they can as possible. So by backing up, what they're able to do is they increase their runway, the length that they have to bring that ball back into the court, um, utilizing good net clearance and heavy spin. So let's go ahead and take a look at the stroke. Um, what's interesting is if we watch here as he's preparing to return serve, he's already considerably um, far back behind the baseline right now. Um, but what he does is, is he's already pretty much committed to his forehand grip. And he uses like a semi-Western grip on his return of serve. But he's already committed, like before he even sees the ball coming, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna crack a forehand here. Nadal does the same thing. If he can, uh, if he can hit a forehand, he will, right? We know that on the tour, on this wing, players can hit anywhere from 10 to 15 percent harder off the forehand side so if they can favor that wing they're going to do it so in the uh in the ready position good uh good position here and notice what he starts doing already and as he's backing up he's pretty much committed to his forehand grip in this position here um do me a favor uh don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button and that notification bell. That just helps the channel, um, favors us uh, with that algorithm, and then we're able to create this content moving forward. So please, I really appreciate your support. All right, he's backing up. Um, why wouldn't they start in that position way back right away, right? What he's trying to do here is just let the server know, like, hey, I may move forward, I may back up. Um, so they don't wanna kinda play their hand too soon. Um, and that's the reason why they do that. So they're just trying to get in the server's head. But now as he backs up, um, server probably can feel that a little bit, right? Knowing that he's going to really crack a forehand here. But he is in that forehand grip, takes a nice split step here. And there he is, committed to that forehand grip. Um, we've talked about this signature position here where they're loading, right? So there's that loading phase where... 90% of the weight is on the, on the left leg. 10% is on the non-loading leg. Racket head is up. His head is nice and still. And then notice the non-hitting arm, how it's extended out, right? So he can work on that spacing. So signature position here. Look at how far back he is. I mean, he is not too far from that fence, right? But once again, he's increased this runway. So maybe instead of being here, now it's here, he's gonna be able to crack the forehand with tremendous neck clearance, right? Optimal racket head speed, and he's gonna be able to bring that ball back into the court. Now what's interesting here is, notice the swing path here and how extreme it is. Look at this. Actually, I'm gonna take the video back a little bit. Notice how he loads here. Look at his the angle of his shoulders. So look at that tilt. That just tells you here that the intent is to get some tremendous net clearance. 
let's look at the swing path. So there's the racket where it's, that's the furthest that it drops. And then look at its relation to the ball. So you can see, I mean, it's not a vertical swing path, right? But it's definitely, I mean, that's fairly extreme. You're not going to see this type of swing path from the baseline. But because he has so much room to work with, he can get more vertical with this. And he's going to go, he's going to go up and across the ball here. Notice how he launches too. So look at, look at this position here. There's the contact phase. So notice how he's finding that ball out in front. He is using a straight arm position. We see that a lot from like Nadal. Um, Del Potro used that straight arm position. And then look at the launch, how he's come off the ground here. Um, so he's really utilizing the entire body here. So the, you know, he's generating this angular momentum or generating power from the ground up, finds that ball in front, uses that buggy whip swing path here which we see from Nadal a lot and then look at the rotation here how he lands on the right foot right so he loaded on the left transferred to the right what's beautiful about this too is by landing on this leg he's then going to be able to push off and then recover so the intent is let's back up let's take a good look at this ball let's crack it try to hurt them with some depth some heaviness of the shot and get it up out of their strike zone. But immediately, now look what he's doing. He moves forward, right? Anticipating a short ball, he's gonna get the shorter ball because as we watch, as he moves forward right here, notice how the baseline comes into play. So now what he's done is he's taken this runway, he shrunk it, now the game comes down to, okay, I'm taking time and space away, now I wanna really hurt him. And that's exactly what he does. He loads, gains his court position here. Look at the loading, the contact, and look at the rotation here. So even more so than he, more rotation than the previous shot. And if we just play the video out here, watch how he did what he wanted to do. Um, he hit the winner and the point is over. So anyway, be interested in your comments here. What do you think of the video? Is this something that you utilize in your game? Um, if you're struggling on the return of serve, why not just back up? Increase your runway, give yourself more time, pick a big target and get back into the point. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for your support.